What is up guys, it's your boy Swallam here, and back with another Classic WoW video for the Cataclysm pre-patch. Now, I have made a couple of videos on my personal prep for Cataclysm, and what to do during the pre-patch as well, and today I want to cover that topic more in depth, but I want to cover another couple of things that you can do during the pre-patch, in the terms of gold farming, so I want to talk about two very specific farms that I've been doing lately in Wrath of the Lich King that I want to share with you guys as well. These are really high value farms and I'll be showing you what to do, where to do this and why we're doing it as well. Now, before that, I do want to say that I do have a Cataclysm gold making guide, and trust me, we have some banger gold making methods coming out in Cataclysm, and if you want to have access to those before those go public in the forms of YouTube videos, check out my Cataclysm gold making guide. So far, it's over 120 pages of Cataclysm gold farms, specific gold making methods to do at launch, some of the very best ways, by the way, to make insane amounts of gold at the launch as well, and you get access to a private gold making community where I'm sharing the hottest tips and tricks that I have. In addition to that, you get early access to gold farms, investments, gold making videos. All of the videos that I make for gold making, you will get early access to those for the Cataclysm expansion. So once again, if you do want to maximize the gold making that you're making, the gold you're making in Cataclysm, check out the gold making guide. It's a great way to support me, and I believe that I can help you make some gold as well at the same time. It could be a win-win scenario. In addition, I have recently opened up my Patreon as well, and we're doing one video minimum exclusively per month on Patreon for Cataclysm and for the month of May we have an absolutely broken way to make gold as well so that this is going to be exclusively on Patreon only. So if you want to have even more detailed gold making posts as well as the exclusive content check out my Patreon and the links to both my Patreon and gold making guide will be down below in the video description and also the pinned comment. Now with that being said let's take a look at the Cataclysm pre patch and a couple of the farms that I've been doing. I also want to leave you guys with a tip at towards the end on another farm you can also look into doing and the first two will not be based on transmog well actually they will be based a little bit on transmog but you are not actively farming for transmog items either way let's jump into it so for the first one i have been farming a little bit of an item in the Outlands, and to be fair, both of these farms will be in the Outlands, so this one is based on farming an item called Damp Scale Basilisk Eye. Any of you guys who've been farming gold in retail, you might have done this once or twice in the past, and it's a really good gold farm, and even now, in Wrath, or during the Cataclysm pre-patch, it is a really good farm. Once again, I've been farming for, you can see I have a loot appraiser window at the top left of my corner, which is based on my auction house's prices at the time of farming this, which I'm playing on par with village, it's a pretty, pretty popular server, it's not the, the most popular one, but it's a pretty popular server after all, and I've been farming here with little to no competition, there's nobody farming here, not just little to no, there's absolutely no competition, and the gold that I'm making, the 495 gold so far in 12 minutes, we can multiply this by 5, so 2,500 gold per hour, a lot of it is from materials, so instead of focusing on transmog, you're focusing on materials. That being said, it's a high value gold farm with a low sell rate, that basically means that you can't farm here for 15 hours a day and sell the items consistently. It's like you you can you can go days without a single sale and then you get a sale. That being said, when you find one customer, he doesn't just need one damp scale basilisk eye. He doesn't even need 10. He very likely needs hundreds of them. At least 100, sometimes 200, sometimes even thousands. It depends on how much reputation that person has. So even though it's a low sell rate item, when you find a customer, he needs or he or she needs very many damp scale basilisk eyes. So when you find a customer, you can offload a huge amount of eyes at the same time. Now, in terms of gold farming, this is kind of how I like doing my farms because then you get more bang for your buck because you're making more gold. So for example, while a wrath farm can give you 1000 gold and you sell the materials really fast, the, like 1000 gold per hour, this one gives you 2500, giving you a lot more value for the time you spend farming, but once again they sell slower. So in that case, you can't farm this for 15 hours a day, you would have to either just farm this one for 1 hour per day or something, maybe not even that, just 2 hours a week, or you can find several farms that has a high value but low sell rate, that way you make 
making way more gold per hour spent farming, and you just have to diversify a little bit. So with that being said, why would you do this farm, slash why would anyone buy these items? So first of all, the, it, the farm works, you don't have to question why it works. The, the simple thing is it works and that way you can make gold from it, but I do want to show you guys why it works as well so you know why the items are selling, and you can even consider using them yourselves. So the item is based on swapping TBC uh, reputations. You can basically hand in a quest called More Basilisk Eyes, which gives you 250 reputation with the Scryers, and this way you can go from the Aldor reputation to the Scryers reputation. Now this is where the transmog part of this farm comes in, because with these professions, or with these reputations, you can get access to some very lucrative patterns and recipes. So looking here we have a couple of patterns for specifically blacksmithing, this is really good for it, but even tailoring and leatherworking. So we have the flame bane breastplate for blacksmithing, we have flame bane gloves for blacksmithing, we have the blast guard pants for leatherworking, flame heart bracers for tailoring, gloves for tailoring, vest for tailoring. So basically we have a bunch of patterns available from the Aldor faction. So let's say you go for Aldor first, you can then pick up all the patterns for your profession from that faction. Then you hand in more Basilisk Eyes to get Scryer's reputation, and you pick up those recipes as well. For blacksmithing specifically, you have even more over here, so you have the Enchanted Adamantite set. This is a four piece set by the way, all of them available from this faction, and then you can also pick up smoke items for yourself at the same time. So once again it's based on recipes that are mostly used for crafting transmog items and because these recipes might be difficult to obtain you can make a lot of gold. This adds a significant barrier to entry to crafting these items, and the more of a barrier to entry you have on crafted items, the more gold you will make, and also the faster sales you will have because you will have way less competition. So on this one, you want to have one character with two crafting professions, that way you can double dip. So for example, if you have blacksmithing and leatherworking, you can learn multiple um, formulas or patterns from both factions. As you can see, we have another leatherworking pattern here with the enchanted fail scale leggings from the Squires, and going down we have the en entire set here. Enchanted fail scale boots, enchanted cleft hoof boots, fell scale gloves, and cleft hoof leggings. So you have an entire set collection for both blacksmithing and leatherworking from the Squires. And at the Aldor you have the exact same, you also have leatherworking here as well, so you have the Flame Scale, and you have the Flame Bane. And then going up you also have blacksmithing, you have an entire set for blacksmithing as well, the Flame Bane, that you can craft from those. So having blacksmithing and leatherworking, you're double dipping on both these professions, or both these reputations, and getting recipes from both of them. Now, you don't have to do that, but other people could do that, in which case this farm is really good for you to just farm those eyes and sell it to those people. As you can see, I've been farming for 23 minutes now, and I've made 1014 gold. So consistently you're making over 2000 gold per hour from this, and you can find some very good TBC transmog items while doing this farm as well, but you're getting very consistent gold from the damp scale basilisk eyes. Now for that farm specifically, you're farming around the lakes of, um, if you go to Turim, you go to the right of Turim, and you basically go in laps across this lake, you follow the lake down, you go a little bit to the right here, then go back left, and follow the lake up to Turim again, then fly across, and you do it as kind of a lap. Now you could just go up and down this first lake as well, but to me it just makes a lot more sense to kind of farm in a circular fashion, or farm in kind of a lap if you, if you know what I mean. So instead of just going up and down the river, I prefer doing full laps, so just starting up top here, and then following all the way down on Turim as well. So you start here, you go all the way down, you follow the river, and then you go back up as well and through the river, and you will have mobs all across the river here, so at the entire way you will always have basilisks available for you to pull. 
Now another farm that is definitely worth doing is another kind of consistent farm that I've been testing. So far it's given me 358 gold in 6 minutes and it's a really consistent value farm as well. This one is based on farming modes of air slash primal air. So before doing this farm check the price of primal air on your server and compare that to my prices of my modes of air as of right now. Now these kind of pumped towards the pre patch of Cataclysm with people handing in primal might to skill up their alchemists and get the transmute masters, so the prices might be a little bit different now. That being said, primals are still really useful for crafting transmog items as well from TBC and from the entire TBC expansion and sell those crafted items as transmog items on the auction house. Now this farm is a hyper spawn farm for primal air, you can also get essence of air at the same time. Now this farm is in Shadow Moon Valley and there's not really that much more to say about it, you're just farming for primal air and also they are level 69 so you can get some really valuable tra transmog items from the TBC expansion as well. So if you want to have some consistent gold farming primal air and getting a chance at TBC transmog this might just be the farm for you. And once again to show you a little bit more in depth where the farm is you go to Shadow Moon Valley you go to the altar of Shatar right here and then you farm across the cliffs. So you go right north of the altar you then go right across the cliffs over here and towards the black temple and then you go back again and you just follow these cliffs and you will find a lot of air elementals and once again they hyper spawn so if you're two people farming it doesn't matter you can just cut the farm in two so one person goes to the left and one person goes to the right the faster you kill them and the more you kill them the more and faster they respawn so you will never run out of mobs at any point now while we are on the topic of primal farming specifically for transmog items or TBC materials, we also have the primal mana farm from the Kirinvar village, as I call it, from the nether storm. Is it nether storm? You know what I mean. So you kill the mana seekers and the mana rates over here as well, or the mage slayers, and they give you motes of mana, which can then be combined into primal mana. Once again, these are level 69 mobs, so they have a chance to give you the absolutely best TBC transmog items in terms of world drop greens, world drop blues, and even world drop epics. As you can see, I just looted a transmog item worth 228 gold while getting steady gold from the modes of mana. Now the modes of mana here they're not really worth as much as the primal air but you have a lot more mobs available. So this farm is really good because of the mob density so the more mobs you pull the faster they respawn the faster you kill them the more loot you get and overall it's a really steady gold farm with a lot of high value items as well and in my experience so far both in Wrath and also in the Cataclysm pre-patch the primals they actually sell well like it doesn't sell as fast as the wrath materials obviously but they really do sell quite well and quite fast as well so farming a little bit on primals especially if they give you decent gold bravery might not be a bad idea so consider giving this one a try and give it a one hour test and see how much gold bravery you make and see how quickly you're able to offload those materials as well now that's pretty much what I have for you today and those are basically the farms that I wanted to show you guys. A couple of different farms than usual, I don't really think a lot of people are going back and doing these farms and they really do work. And two of them are based on TBC primals and the other one is based on the Damscale Basilisk eyes. So if you have leveled the characters you want to level in the pre-patch, if you've farmed your justice points and your honor points and you're just stuck, not knowing what to do until Cataclysm comes out, well consider farming some gold. Gold is going to be really important in Cataclysm. And once again check out my Cataclysm gold making guide on my Patreon page through the links down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments as well, subscribe for more Classic WoW content, Classic WoW videos, and leave a like on the video, it really helps me out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.